New research may have found what is the cause of Meniere's disease, and what they're calling it is a leaky ear. Now, if you've ever heard of leaky gut or something like that, it's a very similar situation. So what I want to do in this video is explain what is leaky ear, but more importantly, I want to tell you what causes it and what you should do about it. Because if you've got Meniere's disease, right, and you're still having episodic vertigo attacks and tinnitus and hearing loss, you know, and your quality of life is pretty terrible, I think you're going to find today's video very, very helpful. So let's get into what I call the leaky ear problem in Meniere's disease. So in Meniere's, you know, we have this thing called endolymphatic high drops. And really all that's saying is we have an increase in fluid accumulation in the inner ear. And because there's really no place for that to go, the structures in the inner ear get crushed. Uh, and periodically, uh, you can get like tinnitus and episodic vertigo attacks and progressive hearing loss. And those are all the symptoms. But something I've been wanting to know for over 20 years is, okay, but, but at a cellular level, what's really causing that? What's breaking down? Well, there are some structures in the inner ear, and I'm not really going to give you guys a big anatomy lesson, but there's this thing called the striovascularis. There's this area called the organ of corti. And basically, they're a barrier, right? And they're responsible for establishing the normal, what we call potential in the inner ear. It has a lot to do with potassium regulation and uh, energy regulation and nutrient delivery. And it's very, very similar to what happens in the gut, in the intestines. Years ago, uh, people started writing about this thing called leaky gut or hyper leaky gut. And it's a real thing. Uh, your gut lining is supposed to be very tight and only allow certain things to go through. Well, when it becomes leaky, then lots of things can pass through that shouldn't, and that disturbs the normal balance in the gut. Now, in the inner ear, very similar situation. You have a very similar arrangement of cells uh, in the inner ear, and it's a barrier, and it's supposed to be nice and tight so that only things get through in a very regulated fashion. But if something opens up those cells, then we allow all sorts of things in there that don't belong. You can disturb the fluid balance, you can disturb the potassium balance, and you can get these episodic attacks of vertigo uh, and tinnitus, which can be chronic, and hearing loss, right? So that is leaky ear. It's you get a leakiness or a disruption of this barrier in the inner ear. And we're talking about, again, the striovascularis, and we're talking about this organ of corti. Okay, that's the leaky ear. That's what that means. But how did that happen, right? So we can't just say, oh, it's a leaky ear. But what did that? Well, if we look again to the gut, we can have a lot of ideas about that that can help us out. So in the gut, a leaky gut or a hyper leaky gut can be caused by a whole host of things. But really what a lot of them boil down to is the immune system. Uh, if you have an autoimmune problem, for example, just the fact that you've got that and you have that inflammation, that can open up those lining of your gut and make it too permeable. Same thing's probably happening in the ear. Now, we don't have a lot of the same research uh, in the inner ear that I'm talking about that we do with the gut, but it, it's a very similar situation. I can just tell you from 20 years of treating people with Meniere's that most of them, the vast majority, respond to some kind of immune system treatment. Now, the trick is, is finding out what is their immune system problem because not everyone has the same thing, right? So you can have an autoimmune condition like a rheumatoid arthritis or Hashimoto's, but it doesn't mean you have to have an autoimmune attack on the inner ear. All you have to have is inflammation, immune system activation for some reason, and it's those cytokines, those immune system messengers that, that, that flow freely, that, that transfer out the body, uh, transfer out the body very freely and circulate that can open up those barrier cells in your inner ear, right? Uh, and that's why if you look at a lot of my case studies on patients that I treat, almost all of them have got something going on with their immune system. Now, some of them need some recalibration therapy. We're not gonna talk about that in this video. I've talked about it a little bit in others. Uh, but that's really what we're talking about is there's an immune system problem for some reason, could be autoimmune, could be just a blood sugar uh, uh, inflammatory problem, could be some kind of infection. And it's the side effects from that that are opening up those barrier cells uh, in your inner ear, in the striovascularis, in the organ of corti, that are making your ear too leaky. So just remember, this is the normal situation, right? This is our normal kind of tight junctions in our cells. And when those open up, things can go through that shouldn't, and that just, it, it pours sugar in the gas tank, right? The potassium ions get dysregulated, energy uh, supply gets dysregulated, inflammatory mediators get dumped into the inner ear, and that just wreaks havoc, and that's where we can get these attacks. Now, I've written uh, and done a lot of videos on the different triggers for Meniere's attacks. What can do this? Well, sodium thinks we think sodium can do this. Uh, sometimes pressure changes, 
anything that spikes inflammation that could be infections. So what do you do about this situation? Well, the first thing we want to remember is that, yeah, leaky ear, cool. We're calling it leaky ear. That's fantastic. That helps us understand it. But what causes that? Well, usually, in my experience, uh, it's some kind of inflammatory problem. It can also be something like you're eating too much sodium, and that's why a lot of people get put on a, so a low-sodium diet or a diuretic. But that's what's doing that, right? But what causes that? So we got to dig down deep. And that, that answer to that question could be very wide, right? It could be you have an autoimmune problem you already know about like Hashimoto's or rheumatoid arthritis. It could be you have an autoimmune problem you don't know about already. So what I do in my office, what I recommend you find someone who's doing as well, is you look for a doctor that knows how to do multiple tissue antibody testing. So for example, if I just show you this example here, right? Uh, this is a multiple tissue antibody test, and what it looks for is about 30 different autoimmune conditions or antibodies to try to give us a clue as to do you have one of these things, right? And, you know, there's stomach and intestines and adrenal and thyroid, and all those are on there. But the, what I want you to remember about this is you can have these antibodies, and that can give us a clue that, yes, you might have an autoimmune problem. I'm not going to necessarily diagnose you with an autoimmune problem, but it's telling us your immune system is targeting these things. Plus, this test is also going to tell us what foods you probably should be avoiding based on known food cross-reactors, because I don't do uh, food sensitivity testing because it's a complete waste of time. So... I suggest that when we're looking with someone with Meniere's disease, that we need to be looking at their immune system, all the things that can do that. Now, the number one thing that we're looking for in Meniere's disease that's very common is some kind of autoimmune problem. So I do this multiple tissue antibody test. Now, the other test I also highly recommend uh, that I like to do is this lymphocyte immunophenotyping. Now, basically what that is, is kind of like getting your immune system fingerprinted because even though you may or may not have any of these antibodies I was talking about, your immune system can still be dysregulated and unregulated. And that could very well be what's driving the ongoing leaky ear in your Meniere's disease uh, that's unstable, that's progressive, right? So this looks at T cells and B cells. And the point about looking at this is that your Meniere's symptoms and your Meniere's disease is really unique to you, right? So look, you and I, we've got, you know, we've got eyes and ears and hands and all that kind of stuff, but you and I and everybody's got their own unique fingerprint. Well, that's the same thing going on with the immune system in Meniere's. Yes, you and I and uh, people with Meniere's have T cells and B cells and natural killer cells, and you've got very similar symptoms. But what your immune system is doing to make that happen can be different from person to person. So it's crucial to find out what your immunophenotype is. Now, phenotype just means what something looks like. And one of the only ways that we can do that is to do this lymphocyte immunophenotyping. Because if you look at this example here, right, you can see that these markers are high. Okay, now that I know that they're the problem, I can go after them therapeutically, right? And do things to try to regulate them and normalize them. And if I don't do that, I don't really know that that's the problem. I'm gonna waste time probably punting and guessing about what's the problem. Uh, and the other thing is, is uh, your symptoms, like if this lady's here, right? Her symptoms could just have easily been caused by those markers being in the low column, right? So you got to do the test. So I think at minimum, you have to be working with someone that understands the complexities we've talked about here. Yes, you can take diuretics. Yes, you can take uh, beta histine. I made a video on that. But ultimately, I think the immune system really has to get investigated to find out what's causing the leaky ear in your particular Meniere's case. So find someone that knows that stuff. Uh, so I hope you guys found today helpful. The bottom line is leaky ear is probably what's causing Meniere's, but what causes the leaky ear, that question's got to be answered. You've got to find someone who's going to be a detective and dig and knows what tests to do and knows how to interpret them and knows how to treat it. Okay, so hope you guys found that helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.